Colin in black and white. Actors playing prospective NFL players who dramatically turn into slaves headed to the auction block. Yep, the former NFL player compares the league's draft process to the slave auction block. Before they put you on the field, teams poke, prod, and examine you, searching for any defect that might affect your performance. No boundary respected, no dignity left intact. You still want to play football professionally? Absolutely. All right, Uncle Junior, need you to take on another video. But before that, as always, welcome back to the folks tuning in and welcome to the first timers. No doubt, nephew, welcome to another Uncle Junior episode. Be sure to drop a comment, hit that like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Much appreciated. Now, what video are we taking on today, nephew? The $44 million former slave and race hustler, Colin Kaepernick, Uncle June. Oh yeah, our favorite NFL ex-slave turned race hustler. Colin, check out my fro Kaepernick. The poor oppressed millionaire who won the hearts of millions while enduring nothing short of torture by way of the NFL plantation and its evil white owners. Now the man endured unspeakable bondage for slave wages of $44 million. Mm, mm, mm the humanity of it all. Oh well. So he's back in the news, huh? Yeah, Uncle June, he gave an exclusive interview and sit down with CBS hawking his new book and documentary. His new book, huh? <laughs> well, I'm sure it's just more destructive, far-left utopian nonsense. Just like his other book, where he calls for abolition of the police and prisons. Titled Abolition for the People, a movement for a future without police and prisons. He criticizes prison reform as only reforming, reshaping, and rebranding structural racism. But you know a more appropriate title for his book? It should be something like Misery for the People, because that's all you'll get when you unleash chaos by the foolish notion of abolishing police and prisons. And the main victims of the chaos will always be poor people of color, the same people Kaepernick claims to care so much about. You see, this dude is just another cookie-cutter, BLM-inspired radical race hustler, encouraging naive, unsuspecting people to be activists for their own demise. Anyway, let's see what old Kaepernick is race hustling, <clears throat> I mean, talking about. Let's check it out. Colin Kaepernick has got a powerful message for younger people in his new book. He says, stand up for what you believe in. His new young adult book is called Colin Kaepernick, Change the Game details of his coming of age journey and his introduction to activism in high school. Adriana Diaz sat down with Kaepernick at a Chicago bookstore for his only TV interview about this book. Please welcome Colin Kaepernick. The off season for Colin Kaepernick looks much different these days. The 35 year old has a nonprofit. You're already creating community. Empowering black and brown youth, a publishing company, and media projects, including a docu-series on Netflix and an upcoming documentary with director Spike Lee. He is also a new father, who's spreading a message of empowerment in his new graphic novel, Change the Game, written with author and University of Chicago professor Eve L. Ewing. I love how you depict yourself in this book, not as some big shot hero, but as a shy, insecure high schooler like we all were. I mean, I'm speaking for you, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Growing up, I was a, I think still am a pretty introverted person. I hope it's true to form, mm -hmm. and that's just kind of how I navigate the world. It's his true high school coming of age story, his journey embracing his blackness, despite resistance from many, including his white adoptive parents. I know my parents loved me, but there were still very problematic things that I went through. I think it was important to show that, no, this can happen in your own home, and how we move forward collectively while addressing the racism that is being perpetuated. There's the setup, folks. Colin has just set the stage for what he is about to reveal to the world. Now remember, remember folks, this is an exclusive reveal of a childhood of unspeakable racism. And I am dripping with anticipation to find out the hell young Colin endured in that racist household of his. I'm sure it's going to be pretty graphic and beyond the pale. One can only imagine. As we proceed. He took cues from his icon, basketball star Allen Iverson, who he said wore his blackness like a suit of armor. And teenage Kaepernick wanted cornrows to match. 
He's getting what roles, his mom asked? Oh, your hair's not professional. Oh, you look like a little thug. Your mom become. said that to you. Yeah. And those become spaces where it's like, okay, how do I navigate this situation now? But it also has informed why I have my hair long today. The grown-up version of Eve wanted to go back in time and give young Colin a lot of hugs. And I was really moved and saddened by the level of kind of self-awareness that he had to develop at a very young age without a lot of guidance. Uh, wait a minute. Did I miss something, folks? That's it? That's what I've been sitting on the edge of my seat for in anticipation? Did he just reveal his biggest racist moment was when his mama said something about his damn braids? <laughs> Nephew, you sure we got all the video? We have it all, Uncle June. And you cut nothing out? No. Now there has to be more to the story than that. Listen, when these folks are out there hawking their woe is me books, now they usually leak the most frightening part of the book, the jaw dropping part to get you hyped up so you can go out and buy the book and watch the documentary to get the rest of the story. His braids, that's his big selling point to prove racism. Bruh, you killing me, bruh. <laughs> well, truth be told, now we know this dude ain't been through no damn racism. Like the rest of them, he's a pretender. If you're a true victim of actual, real, stop you in your tracks racism, that would be your go-to when you're asked about it. If your go-to racism story is about your damn braids, you, sir, are exactly what we knew you to be. A lying, opportunistic, wannabe, blackity-black, so-bad race hustler who's endured no true racism. So you got to make something up. And the best you could come up with was your mama said you look like a thug with braids. <laughs> and of course, his mom is white, so he gonna play it up real, real good, like... Oh, it was so harrowing <laughs> as a young black boy. <laughs> now, Kaepernick needs to get with old Juicy Smollett so he can up his fake racism game. That damn braid story is weak. Now, just imagine Harriet Tubman telling her story of bondage, racism, daily threats of death, lynchings, and her escape to freedom enduring the Underground Railroad journey, risking her very life. Then after reaching freedom, she went back to get her people time and time again. A story of true life and death evil to the bone racism. Then once she finishes her gripping story, someone says, Kaepernick, you're up. And brother, you got a tough act to follow. I hope you brought your A-game racism story. And then he gets up there with no shame whatsoever and tells that damn story about the time his mama chastised him about him wanting damn braids. <laughs> Boy, if you don't exit stage right and take your wannabe victim behind home somewhere, that was pretty weak, Cap. Pretty damn weak. <laughs> but all right, let's continue. Let's see what other lies Kaepernick got to tell. The former NFL quarterback who once led the 49ers to the Super Bowl was known in high school for his baseball. The pitcher even had major league interest, but he bucked public pressure and followed his heart to the gridiron. There were a lot more black people in football that I was like, I found some community here. Do you still want to play football professionally? <laughs> Absolutely. I woke up this morning before our events, trained five, six days a week. I'm still up at 4.30, I go get my training in. That passion is still there and the ability is still there. Are you talking to any teams? We reach out to all 32 teams every year throughout the year because my biggest thing is just let me get on the field. If I'm not good enough, cut me, but give me the chance to show you what I can do. So this slave wants to go back to the plantation, back to the white slave owners and their slave auction blocks. He makes a documentary exposing the slave plantation called the NFL, and he's itching to get back in there. Boy, these new age slaves are hard to figure out. Unlike Harriet Tubman, who escaped from the plantation with no intention of ever returning, this dude escaped and is publicly begging for his slave masters to take him back. New age slaves are hard to figure out, but I guess slave wages ain't what they used to be. So I suspect that's the motivator. He wants some more of those slave wage millions. <laughs> 
This dude has an identity complex in my opinion. But dude, you gots to stop running around acting like you're a victim. The dude was raised in the burbs doing all the things kids love to do growing up. He wasn't raised in the hood. But he's so damn ungrateful. He was given up by his birth mother and through the grace of God, he was adopted by loving parents. The fact that they are white is irrelevant. Who knows how his life may have turned out if he wasn't adopted by those people. We'll never know, but we do know this man was not mistreated. The folks who adopted him, raised him, gave him everything a young boy could want or need, and obviously couldn't care less about him being half black or whatever. And he shows his gratitude by calling them racist. But that's what happens when you get into the race hustle business. You take on the identity of a race hustler and the world as you know it ceases to exist. From that point on, you're a cult member and you see racism in every damn aspect of society and you become a professional pretend victim. And like all the other pretend victims, he has to fake racism to connect with the people. And the best this grifter can do is claim racism because of his damn braids. Now I used to say the racism bar is low, but it's not low. It is non-existent. Thanks to hustlers like Colin Kaepernick. And I guess we'll end it right there, folks. But thanks for tuning in, and please like, subscribe, and comment. It is much appreciated. Till next time, peace.